All right, if you're like me, then you probably use Vim for all kinds of different things every day. So I use Vim for editing code. I use it for editing text files. I use it for even writing notes. But what if you want to do some writing? So I have a blog post here and maybe you want to do some writing like maybe creating a blog post like this or maybe you want to write your next best-selling novel. I don't know, whatever you're up to. By default, Vim is not really inspiring anybody with this layout. So this is how it looks basically out of the box. And so as you can probably tell, this is not the most conducive for getting some serious writing done. But in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make your Vim look much nicer for writing in. I'll show you how to turn it from something like this to something like this. And as you can see now, it's not taking up the entire width of my terminal, so it's much more readable. It's removed all the distractions around the editor, like my status bar and everything. And another cool little feature is that Vim even has a spell checker built in. So I'm going to show you how to do all of these things in order to make Vim a much better experience for writing in. Now I do all of my writing in Vim, as if you would ever catch me using Google Docs or anything like that. But the most important plugin that you absolutely must have if you are a writer using Vim is this plugin right here, Goyo Vim. And what this is, is it's the distraction free writing environment. So this is the plugin that kind of centers the writing space and removes all the distractions. And this is a plugin. I have done other videos about installing plugins if you would like to watch that. But the way I installed this is you would open up your vimrc file or your nvim file, whatever you're using. And then down here I have all the plugins I have installed. And so I've installed a plugin like this. The author is June Gun, and it's Goyo Vim. And if you're using the Vim plugin manager that I used, a uh, Vim plug that I've done a video on before, then you can also include this option right here where you can specify which documents you want it to be used for. So I only want Goyo to be used for markdown documents. That's the format that I write all of my documents in. So I don't really need it for writing HTML or CSS or anything like that. So if you want, you can add this option as well. And as an interesting little coincidence, uh, the same person that wrote this Goyo plugin is actually the same person that wrote the plugin manager that I use. They've created a whole bunch of really useful Vim plugins. So thank you, I guess. But let's get back into here and let's assume that you already have this installed. Let's go ahead and install this plugin. And let's open up our document again. And the way that we can run Goyo is just by typing in colon Goyo, hitting enter, and your environment is now distraction free and centered. But there are a couple of things that we still need to do. Like for example, Vim doesn't have line breaks for words by default. And so this is useful if you're writing code. Like I don't mind my words wrapping like this when I'm writing code, but when I'm writing text, it's a little bit weird to have the words broken up like this. So what you can do is you can set an option. It's going to be called set line break. Hit enter on that. And then as you can see, the lines are now broken as you would expect them to be. But Goyo doesn't automatically do that, so we are going to have to set that. And one other nice setting that you might want to enable is set spell. I think it's just spell, so we can hit enter. And yes, now we are getting the spell check. It doesn't like my spelling of Fediverse. But that is very useful if you're like me and you don't necessarily know how to spell that well. But you probably don't want to have to set these settings every single time, so we can automate the process. Let's go back to our Vim config file. And we're going to add these functions right here. If you don't want to type all these out, these are basically just a couple of functions that are running every time you enter Goyo and every time you leave Goyo. And this little code snippet you can find on the GitHub. I'll leave a link to this in the description. It's going to be under this section right here. And you just want to copy this Goyo enter and Goyo leave function as well as these commands right here. And so inside these functions, let us set the line break. And let's set the spell check. You can add an option here for your locale. I'm just using the English US dictionary here. And additionally, you can also turn off some other plugins that might conflict with Goyo. And this is a plugin that I use a lot when I'm coding. It basically takes a color value and then displays the color for it. But this has no use for me whenever I'm writing. So I can just turn this off and you would turn off any other plugin or anything else that you might want. 
And then whenever you exit Goyo, you would just set all these back because whenever I'm coding, I do want to have no line breaks and I don't want to have a spell check on. And there are a few more options that you can add as well. So you can set the width and the height for Goyo if you think that the width and height of them by default is a little bit too much. Maybe you can make this only 50% or if you don't want to set this by percent, I believe this will be characters. So this would be 50 characters high, let's say 50% and then let's say, I don't know, 50 characters. Let's see how that looks. And then when we run this, it's going to be much smaller, of course. And you can also set the width and the height just from the editor. So you can type Goyo and then 50, that would be 50 characters wide. You can set it to 100 characters wide if you want to change it on the fly. And there's a few other options that you might find useful. I don't really, but if you want a complete list, it's going to be here in the documentation. And so now whenever you run Goyo, then it's going to automatically apply those settings that we set. And whenever you exit Goyo, and you can exit Goyo by running Goyo exclamation, or you know what's easier is just you can run quit. So however you would normally quit Vim, like just type colon Q, and that will exit back to the main editor, which is obviously easier than writing out Goyo again. But finally, let's talk about how to use a spell check because the spell check is very useful. I use it all the time. And you can jump around to the various misspelled words by using bracket S. So you can use right bracket S to go forward and then left bracket S to go back. And since it doesn't think that Fediverse is a real word, we can see the suggestions that it has by typing Z exclamation. And so you can choose one of these options by just using your numbers. So let me push one and then it will change it to that. Not really what I wanted, so I can just undo that. And you can add a word to the dictionary by writing ZG. And it's going to tell it that is not misspelling added to the dictionary. So as you can see on the bottom, it has added it to the dictionary. And it doesn't do too well with names either. So let's just add this one as well. And it'll also correct some basic grammar mistakes as well. So it thinks that this is wrong, but it's not a misspelling. And if you do something like you don't capitalize the first letter of something, then it will give you a little warning right here. It's turned yellow and you can type Z equals to fix that. And just as a little trick, if you want to just automatically grab the first suggestion that it's going to give you, you can run one Z equals and that will automatically change it to the first suggestion that they have. And that's the basics for how you use the spell check in Vim. If you want a more complete guide, Vim has you covered. So you run colon H for help and then spell. And it's going to open up a split here. Uh, let me just exit out of Goyo so you can see this better. But it's going to open up a split here with a complete manual for how to use spell checking in Vim. So do check this out if you want more detail. Because in this video, I'm just covering the absolute basics. You know Vim, you know how many different things Vim can do. So if you really want to familiarize yourself with this, then go ahead and check this out. But that is all there is to writing in Vim. So every time I want to write, I just type Goyo. There's probably a way to make that simpler, but I don't write that often. So writing out the word isn't that big of an inconvenience for me. All of my documents I write in Markdown. It is very useful and convenient to do so. But of course you can write in any format that you would wish. And that's how you can do all your writing in Vim. And so I never want to see anybody using OpenOffice, LibreOffice, or Google Docs ever again.